little behind the scenes. What we got going on? We're taking photos of my girlfriend and her cousin. What are they wearing? Right, Merchandise, so of course. What else? Max McDowell merchandise flying off the shelves, apparently. <laughs> there you go. Uh huh. Uh huh. There you go. Now, follow over me again. Follow me over here. Okay. Now, now look said, at me. Now look, so look at now look at the okay. camera. Right look at the big camera. Big right big look at the camera. There you go. Work it. I see Own you it. Laugh. Laugh. Best I need more. Laugh. Laugh. I need more. Let me do the laugh. Don't be crazy. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now both of you guys just stare at me real quick one more time. Oh. Okay. Did we get any good ones? Yeah. Absolutely. We are here in Bloomington, Indiana. I just played a show last night at a place called The Bishop. And um, Max and his girlfriend and her friend uh, are wearing his brand new hoodie. So Brandon is doing a uh, quick little photo shoot with them, which is really fun. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, Brandon's treating it like a 90s hardcore shoot, but right in front of the courthouse. I am in Columbus, Ohio. And I am on the road right now with a new artist named Max McNown, who is actually um, a friend of mine's nephew. <laughs> so he's pretty young. But um, yeah, I got asked to come in and uh, play guitar for him, kind of be his band leader, and help kind of introduce him into the touring world. So we're just going out doing some acoustic shows, just hopped in a minivan, which is what I'm in right now. And uh, the opening for a really cool band called Briscoe from Austin kind of a country Americana vibe. But uh, yeah, we're having a good time out here. Max is doing great. And uh, we've done four shows so far. We got a day off in Columbus today, which means some of my favorite people are about to get uh, this minivan in their driveway. Uh, my friend Colin and Michelle, um, some people might know Colin from a band called House of Heroes and Vespertine. Um, band based here in Ohio, in uh, Columbus. So. Anytime I'm here, I always hit them up to hang out, so we're going to go grab dinner, and then I think Colin is going to tattoo me, which we've been trying to do for a good while now. I don't know why it hasn't happened, just, you know, circumstances, like I'm out of town, or, you know, he gets booked up or whatever, but it looks like it's going to happen tonight, so I'm getting kind of a funny tattoo. At this point, I'm so covered in tattoos, it's like, yeah, that's hilarious, put it on me, but, but yeah, we're having a good time, like I said, on the road, and uh, Max is doing great. Um, Total Natural. Uh, if you're watching this, I would encourage you to check out Max McNown on any streaming service you use. Last name is spelled M-C-N-O-W-N, and uh, he's, he's doing great so far. His streaming numbers are like exceeding, you know, where he is on, you know, on the road, for example, you know. His record comes out April 12th, and we're just out here kind of uh, getting warmed up for what's to come, I guess. So. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited to work with uh, my friend Brandon, who's his manager again. It's been a long time since we worked together. So uh, yeah, all is well in the music world. So uh, yeah, in the meantime, I'm gonna go to Colin and Michelle's house, grab some food, get tattooed. So here we are in Columbus, Ohio, in my home. And I'm with my old friend, Ethan. We've known each other a very long time. And it's been, uh, been wanting to get some tattoos on him. He's got a lot of tattoos already, and I gotta add my mark to the collection. So that's what we're doing. We'll get to unveil what it is at the very end. There's some humor in it, but also life lessons. How's my Michael Bolton tattoo doing back there, Colin? It's, uh, I'm just trying to think of a pun with one of those songs. <laughs> It says when a when a man loves a Colin. When a man loves a tattoo. How are we looking back there? Feeling great. Looking good. Did you start yet? You can't feel it. No, man. I must not be doing it right. I'll go harder. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you could, yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to. You know, twitch a little bit. If that's cool. Yeah. I'm getting tattooed, and we're draining lymph nodes over here. Yeah. So. It's a good hang here, what's happening. Good hang here right now. Well, that was a fun evening, hanging with friends, getting a tattoo, meeting new friends, and ending up in the greenest stairwell ever. Parking garage downtown Columbus. Get out here in the, in the big city now. Here we are. I gotta park here for the hotel if I wanna avoid paying $40 a night for valet parking. Fancy. 
But uh, yeah, I love the city. I've been coming here a long time. I'm really stoked to uh, have a day off here and see the Rigsby family. It always kind of feels like a little bit when you get to see some friends and go hang at their house while you're on the road. But uh, tomorrow we head to Pittsburgh to play a show there. Then we go to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Then another day off. I think we're gonna have the day off in Cincinnati. And then we play Lexington, that's it for this run. Then go home for like, I don't know, like a week or two, week or so maybe. Eight days, nine days, something like that. I don't know. My days are all jumbled right now. And then, and then we head out with another artist named Blake Rose for like a month. Just playing acoustic shows for a month. It'll be fun. But anyways, about back to the hotel already. Right across the street from this beautiful old church. Pretty cool. And uh, my room has a view of that. I'm on the 21st floor. Actually, my room number is 2112, like the Rush classic album. I'll show you in a sec. Here we go. This is a older Sheraton Hotel. The music works great. It's really slow. Look, I'm on the 21st floor. Look how slow this is. Oh yeah, it's sped up a little bit. But still, comparatively like new hotels, elevators just shoot you straight up to the top. This takes a minute. I just had a thought. I've been touring for 25 years and this has been my view for most of those years. I don't even know how many hotel rooms I've been in in my life, but it's probably a lot. Anyways, here's the Rush reference I was talking about earlier. Temple of Syrinx, anybody? All right, I'm back in for the night. Um, tomorrow morning I'm probably gonna get up and I wrote a song today for my songwriting group, so I'm gonna get that kind of demoed tomorrow morning, but uh, yeah, this is my little workspace. My interface, my mic, laptop, blah, blah, blah. One of my guitars, this is my Guild OM140. It's a good, inexpensive acoustic. If something happens to it, I wouldn't be too bummed. But check out this night view I got. It's pretty, pretty cool. I woke up early this morning and the sunrise was amazing from this window, but there's that church. Not much of a heights guy, but this this is kind of like my limit. Like I can do this. <laughs> you can even see me right now. I can do this and like not feel nervous, but I don't know, another 10 floors up and I'll get the uh, like jello legs, I call them. But anyways, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed my day off. Uh, on to Pittsburgh tomorrow. I thought it'd be fun to maybe go through the uh, instruments I brought on this run of shows with Max. Um, by the way, I'm in Lexington, Kentucky uh, for the last show of this run with Briscoe. Um, we got like a week or so off and then um, back on the road with an artist named um, Blake Rose, who is Australian, I believe. But anyways, uh, yeah, I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show what I got here, right? So uh, this one here is, I brought this as like my backup guitar in case I broke a string or something. I don't really need to bring two guitars, but I feel like if I don't, then I will break a string. But of course, with this here, I haven't broke a string. But anyways, uh, this is a Guild OM140. I, I love this guitar. It's super light. Um, not that I really care about weight, but it's really light. Uh, slightly smaller body than a Dreadnought. Um, a little curvier in this region here. Um, it's all stock, minus the pickup. And then I also installed a um, little strap button on the uh, back of the neck here, myself. You know, I guess I'm a luthier now. Uh, and this is the LR Bags M1 Active pickup. Um, the regular M1s are cool. They sound great. Um, but just having uh, an LR Bags Anthem in my other guild um, and running everything through their voice print DI, um, this was just so much quieter with a, uh, a non-active, a passive pickup. And so, uh, yeah, I swapped it out for the active. Um, 
I think, like I said, the passive sounds really good, but uh, this one really sounded great and kind of helped match the levels. And I didn't have to, kind of like my band guitar or my ganjo, I have to really crank it in that voice print so it's like, it starts to get a little hissy, which I don't love. Um, but this is a great sounding guitar. It's a great like travel, not travel size guitar, but great travel guitar. This is a good one just to throw around and they're not terribly expensive, so I don't mind if it gets a little beat up. I just noticed I'm already starting to get some little pick scrape, like you wouldn't be able to see on the GoPro, but anyways, that's my backup that I really only just use, you know, bring it in. I bring all my guitars into the room, hotel rooms every night, obviously, just don't want to get ripped off from, from the car. But um, this is the one I always pull out in hotel rooms, though, for like demoing and recording and writing and stuff like that. So moving on. This one here, if you've watched any previous videos I've posted, this is kind of my, my baby. Um, yeah, this is maybe my number, number two now that I have my dad's Guild D25. Anyways, um, yeah, this is my number one right now on the road. It's a Guild D15M, it, all mahogany. Yeah, it's a 1986. It's got, if you can tell, it's got an arched back. So it really adds a lot more low end. Might be tough to tell on camera. But it is such a great sounding acoustic. Anyone that is interested in like a good quality, American made, um, wonderfully good sounding acoustic, just find, try to find any Guild acoustic from the 70s and 80s. There was just something special about them. Um, <clears throat> I'll probably bring my dad's Guild D25 that he gave to me last November. I'll bring that maybe on the next run of shows. I just haven't put a pickup in it. That's really only the only reason, really. Um, but yeah, this one is kind of my workhorse. I've had this since high school. I think I got it when I was a junior, maybe, maybe a senior. Um, so I've had it since like 95, 96, so it's wild to think that when I first got it, it was only 10 years old. And, <clears throat> you know, there's some, there's some wear and tear on this thing, all, all from me, probably. <laughs> um, I'm not always super kind to my guitars. I don't do it on purpose, I don't sit here and chisel away at something, but, you know, it's just, it is what it is, man. You, just, you take these things on the road and they get wear and tear, but I love a guitar that has seen some, you know, some good time on the road. And, you know, to me, it's just like, it just tells a story. So there's a lot of little dings and things and in this guitar. And there's even like, I don't even know if I did that. Probably not. Looks like maybe someone before me had a belt buckle. I don't worry about buckles. So but I didn't do that. Everything else I think is pretty much me, but this thing, I man, I've used this anytime I've needed to use acoustic on a record. I've, it's been this one all the way back to my old band, the Supertones. There was rarely any acoustic on the records, but there was, I think one, the f record came out in like 2000, I think, a record called Loud and Clear. There's like one very small acoustic part on the entire record, and it was this guitar. So this has always been my go-to, uh, no matter what. Um, but now that I have my dad's D25 from 1972, uh, which is the guitar I learned on, watch that video, it's, it's a few back. I did a whole episode just on that. But um, I love having this thing on the road. It still kind of smells the same. It's always felt great. I've done such minimal work to it. Um, my friend James Hedges at one point like refretted, I think from like somewhere around here down. I got a new nut at one point, but that's it. And then I've got a LR Bags Anthem in here. You can't really see much, but there's a little little volume guy right there. Um, and the pickup's under the bridge. But yeah, I, I, uh, I love this thing so much. So I'm gonna get hopefully that same pickup installed in my dad's. Um, D25 this week and then take it on the uh, next tour with Max because we'll be doing the duo acoustic thing um, and I'm kind of the one-man band <laughs> Max plays guitar obviously but I'm doing uh, acoustic harmonica and like this little stomp box that my friend Trent Armstrong loaned me who is a great drummer by the way plays with a girl named Haley Witters um, 
Her whole band is so sweet, and her herself obviously too. She's a sweetheart. But um, anyways, Trent loaned me this little stomp box thing to have a little rhythm while we played, so I can kind of, you know, if I'm doing this, I can I tap my foot anyways. So now I just have something underneath it to tap and give a little thud, you know, almost like a kick drum. But anyways, that's the T15M from 1986. Uh, go find one of these, or I think I still see these exact guitars. It's like a satin finish, but it's not annoying satin. Um, it sounds kind of loud, but it's not. It's really pretty, really pretty wood and stuff like that. But I've, I'll see these on Reverb for like eight, nine hundred bucks. I think I got this for four hundred fifty bucks, maybe four hundred bucks back in the nineties. So they don't appreciate in value a ton, but they are amazingly easy to play and great sounding guitars. Anyways, on to the Ganjo. And last but not least on this acoustic tour is the Gold Tone AC6 Plus banjo tar, or Ganjo. Um, for those that don't know what this is, it's essentially just a banjo with a guitar neck on it. And it has six strings and it's tuned just like a guitar. So I know there's probably a lot of um, bluegrass nerds out there, no disrespect. But uh, people, I think, in the bluegrass community frown upon these. Do I care? Absolutely not. I'm not a bluegrass guy. I never listen to bluegrass. I, I respect it, and the musicianship in it is insane. It's, it's, like, it's like great bluegrass players to me. It's like this thrash metal version. It's like, it's like if thrash metal went country, I think that's bluegrass. Because um, those dudes would be like, but, 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 just all over the place like crazy. I can't do that stuff. But, but this is a great... Um, just a great tool to have um, at home in the studio and on the road to be able to just, you know. It's just really fun. I've actually already recorded with this a few times on some new songs uh, I've written recently uh, through my songwriting group that I do with some friends. And it's just a cool thing to like, even if, you know, on a song, you know, let's say it's just like a chorus is going. Let's say just doing that, right? Like on electric and acoustic basses playing the root notes on, then I just overdub something like this. It's fun. I use this on a few songs with Max's. He's got um, a couple songs with banjo in it. Um, there's one called Dead Set that kind of has a cool... That kind of vibe. So it's almost like this little Western thing, but on banjo. So I'm doing stuff like that. Um, once we play shows as a full band, I'll be doing more of the... There's a great one called um, Rather of a Nightmare he has that normally what I do, I think on the recording, I'm guessing they used a ganjo like this. Uh, and it does like a, this might be out of tune, but it does like a. Which sounds cool, but what I do is I'll tune up this string, the B, so I can get the, that I had up here. Uh, Wait, no, that one. <laughs> a little confused this morning, sorry. So it just sounds a little cooler when it's, I don't know, it makes it a little, when you're capoing up here, it's not as loud and resonant uh, from what I'm finding with this thing. But this thing is really cool. Um, 
huge shout out to my buddy Kurt Ozon, um, who uh, works with Gold Tone and the lore for mandolins and stuff like that. Um, he hooked me up with them and introduced me over email, and they gave me a you know artist pricing on this, which I'm very grateful for. So thank you to Gold Tone. Um, I've been having so much fun with this thing um, on and off the road. So, and this will be a staple with, you know, moving forward with Max on the road and once we get to our full band shows and stuff like that. So. Anyways, um, yeah. Last show today, Lexington, Kentucky, at a place called The Burl with Briscoe. It's going to be fun. And then uh, head home for a little bit. Um, I'm only like two and a half hours away from home, so it'll be nice to come back here to the hotel tonight, um, get some rest. thought about going home tonight, but like I won't get home like 11 or 12 and dragging everything in the house that late. And then it'll, it'll kind of wake me back up and I won't be able to fall asleep. Anyways, I'm just going to stay in this room tonight. And then... Uh, Leave kind of early in the morning. I gain an hour, so I'll be back probably around like 9 or 10 a.m. Uh, Nashville time. But yeah, that's it for now. Probably film some footage of the show tonight, and then that'll be it for the video. Make sure you check out Max McNown's music, M C N O W N. Uh, really cool Americana, kind of slightly country. Um, yeah, just good. He's just, just just has good songs, straight up. Really really cool kid. Um, it's encouraging to see like a younger generation just like producing these great tunes, you know, that sound more like he's been writing songs for 10 years. Um, and I'm uh, privileged to, uh, you know, get on the road with him and uh, kind of, I guess, show him the ropes of touring, <laughs> which is uh, kind of half why I'm out here. But um, my friend is his manager, so that that's why it worked out. And uh, we've been having a great time. Um, it's cool to see him, you know, and his brother who's out here helping helping us uh, just, you know, just kind of navigate this new life of touring. You know, something that I've been doing for 25 years. You know, this is year one for them. So it's really cool. It feels like a, not really passing the torch because it's not like I'm just here for a month and then I leave. <laughs> uh, I'll be with Max as long as he'll have me. So that's about it for uh, Guitar World. That's what I'm playing on the road. So I, I have nothing else to say right now. Last show of the run, got the sound check. Max is ready to go. Singing not my song. Singing, singing, a, Briscoe singing a Briscoe song that we love called Coyotes or Coyote? Coyotes or Coyotes? Coyotes. The Coyotes. As they do howl. This is a really cool venue called The Burl in uh, Lexington. Let me show you. Cool little bar area. This is the indoor stage, and then if you come out here in the brightness, the uh, outdoor stage is here. Got like an arcade over there. They have a brewery over there now, it's new. And out here, it will uh, fit like 1,200 people. Um, I played here before, like a year and a half ago with another artist, so. Yeah, it's gonna be a good last last show of the uh, run with Briscoe. And we, luckily we get to meet up with them again in the middle of that next tour. We fly out to Colorado to do two more shows with Briscoe, which is awesome, because they're sweet dudes. And uh, yeah, fun hang. That's it. That's all I got. The tour is done. It wasn't a long one. It was only 10 days, seven shows, but uh, it was a good time. Max's very first tour ever and his brother Brock, who was out there kind of helping with merch and all around a uh, crew guy, I guess. Um, but yeah, we got a week at home, which is nice. Um, as of filming this, I've got a week from today until I fly to uh, Seattle. And uh, then we start a month long tour uh, with an artist named Blake Rose, who's from Australia, kind of a popular artist. Um, but it's going to be a good time. Um, it's cool to see Max go out on his very first tour ever when, you know, I've been touring for over 20 years. I don't know. That was my 
40th, 50th tour. I don't know. I've done, I've done a lot of touring in my life. And um, so it's cool to, to kind of see him coming up and be a part of it and, you know, uh, kind of help point him in the right direction on things. And, you know, I guess uh, sort of a take him under my wing kind of scenario. Um, but he's a really good dude. Great songs. Great singer. He absolutely killed it on this tour opening for Briscoe. Those guys were amazing. Super nice dudes and a killer live band. Um, if you like, you know, kind of folk Americana country stuff, uh, they're from Austin. So check them out. And, uh, yeah, this next one will be cool. I mean, it's the same, same thing. We're doing kind of an acoustic duo thing. So we are just hopping in a minivan and driving all over the U S on this next one, uh, starting in Seattle and ending in San Diego a month later. So we'll make a big loop around the country. It's going to be a good time, but we do get to meet up with the Briscoe guys one more time, which is cool. Uh, in the middle of this tour, we are missing one Blake Rose show and flying to Colorado to do two shows with Briscoe again. I believe Fort Collins and Colorado Springs, if my memory serves me correctly. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. So thanks for following along. I'm going to try to make some more tour videos as we're out there uh, just hacking it out. And um, yeah, and then there's an exciting thing coming up. Uh, it's not announced yet, so I guess I won't mention it, but... Uh, not a full tour or anything, but there is a show coming up. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be Max's first full band show. So uh, that's kind of my job is putting the band together and uh, seeing where it goes from there. And um, yeah, it'll be in June. That's all I can say. But um, I'm excited for that one. It's going to be cool because a lot of Max's songs are full band songs. We're doing just a stripped down version on tour where uh, I'm just kind of playing acoustic or ganjo. And I've got a little stomp box that I talked about earlier in the video when I showed you my instruments I'm using on this tour. I think I'm going to bring my dad's guild, um, which is that guy. My dad's D25 that he gave me that's in a previous video. So I think I'm going to bring that one. Um, I need to get a pickup put in it by LR Bags this week. Um, they have an office here. And Mike, who runs that office, is a good friend of mine. And I'm going over there anyways on Tuesday to help him... Uh, basically do a, a mass string change on all the acoustics in their office. So I'm going to go help him with that and um, hoping I can get a, uh, an anthem, which is, which is what it's called. That's what's in my other guild I have on the road. Um, my D 15 and it's just a fantastic sounding pickup. It's very natural sounding, which I love, um, but not too bright. Like a lot of other pickups that I've heard in acoustics. Some of them are just way too bright and uh, tinty, I guess. Um, Anyways, uh, yeah, and then I'm maybe thinking I can try to get a more active pickup in my Ganjo, which would be cool. It's a magnetic passive pickup in there, which is, sounds really cool. There's some low end to it, which is nice. But uh, the volume difference between that and an active pickup in my acoustic is pretty drastic. So I have to crank the Ganjo on my uh, DI, which causes a little bit of hiss, um, which I don't love. <laughs> uh, it's not really noticeable live, but it'd be cool to have those kind of match in dynamics, which is uh, the hope. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'll do another little gear rundown, I guess, on the next run. But the only difference will really be I'm just swapping out my main acoustic, I think. As long as I get a pickup in that one with my dad's old guild, then I'll be bringing that. If not, I'll bring my D15. Um, and everything else will be the same. But uh, thanks for watching and tuning in. Glad you're here. Hope you're doing well, everybody. Take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. I don't know what this is. I think I was going to do this, which is stupid. I don't do that in real life. Maybe I was thinking. I don't know. See you later.